Welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Whitney Van Lanningham, and as of filming, the early reviews for Dwayne's hierarchy-shaking passion project are all saying that Pierce Brosnan as Dr. Fate is the highlight of the film. So today, I want to break down both Kent Nelson's and Naboo's comic history and speculate on what the introduction of Dr. Fate means for the future of the DCEU. Thanks to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. More on them in just a minute. Before we start, this video is mostly spoiler-free for Black Adam. Towards the very end, I'll include a spoiler warning so that you can dip out if you haven't seen it yet. If you leave a comment on this video with a spoiler, be sure to tag it out of respect for your fellow nerds. Now let's get into Fate. Dr. Fate first appeared in More Fun Comics number 55 in 1940, just two years after Superman's comic debut and one year before Batman, making this character one of the OG heroes of DC. And although Fate shares a lot of similarities with Marvel's Doctor Strange and Moon Knight, he actually predates Steven by about 20 years and Mark by 35. Dr. Fate is a bit like Shazam in the sense that he's the avatar of a mortal who can magically suit up by being a conduit to divine power. The major difference is that when the mortals put on the Helm of Fate, they're essentially puppets to a godly lord of order, Naboo. No relation to Padme's homeworld, this dude is from the ancient planet Cilia. Despite being on Team Good Guy, Naboo is a bit of an a-hole and doesn't exactly care about the well-being and desires of his host, just stopping agents of chaos. The longer a person serves Dr. Fate, the more of their personal past becomes a hazy memory. Because Naboo's powers are tied to the Helm of Fate, there have been several hosts who have become Dr. Fate, sometimes even with multiple hosts fusing into one being. Some Sometimes it's a stepson with his stepmother, but that's a Freudian not to untangle for another time. You ever watch behind the scenes featurettes on how crazy healthy actors have to be and start to think to yourself, well sure, if I had a staff of nutritionists and chefs, I'd be healthy too. Good news, being healthy just got a whole lot easier thanks to Thrive Market. Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. Because look, let's be honest, unless you live next door to a health food store, you're probably not not stocking up on chia seeds and kale chips on the reg, no matter how vegan, keto, low carbon impact you're trying to eat. Thrive sends products you choose to your door, making eating healthy easier than ever. Thrive Market can also help you cut your grocery bill by over 30%. You can shop for thousands of the best-selling organic foods and natural products below traditional retail prices. At the new Rockstar's office, we've been tossing back these grass-fed beef sticks from Chomps and these organic fruit snacks into our maws, and boy do we love it. Salty beef sticks, right? Little fruit snacks. We eat them, we love them, it's fun. Click the link in the description box or go to thrivemarket.com slash new rockstars to receive a free $60 gift when you join Thrive Market today. The most prominent Dr. Fate host and the one Brosnan plays in Black Adam is Kent Nelson. In more fun comics number 67, we get Nelson's origin story. In this story set in 1920, we meet a young Kent, the Swedish American son of an archeologist named Sven Nelson. Sven is basically an ancient aliens truther. He believes that there's no way man could have built the pyramids alone and decides to venture to Egypt with his son to unearth the truth. He brings Kent along with him to explore an underground pyramid. The two find evidence of an alien language written on the walls of the tomb. Kent, being a kid, wanders off to explore while his dad does boring Indiana Jones stuff and stumbles upon an ancient immortal being known as Naboo. Naboo ensorcels Kent's mind and influences him to pull a lever that releases the god, along with a poisonous gas that kills Sven. Naboo is like, Yeesh, sorry about that, kid. How about I teach you the secrets of the universe to cheer you up? Kent takes him up on it, and with Naboo's tutelage, he becomes Dr. Fate. After receiving divine empowerment, Fate's powers are nearly limitless due to the Helmet of Fate, the Amulet of Anubis, and the Cloak of Destiny. In addition to the usual lineup of superhuman strength, levitation, electrokinesis, illusion casting, and invulnerability, he's also able to convert energy into matter and matter into energy. He can telepathically influence any being or object, phase through walls, astral project, and perform a number of occult rituals and spells. Fate is one of the most powerful sorcerers in the universe, and although he most often uses his powers for good, he sometimes struggles to accept his abilities as both a gift and a curse. Even without Naboo's power, Kent becomes a masterful sorcerer on his own. To top it off, this dude is also a doctor, an archaeologist, a martial artist, and can speak multiple languages. Okay, show off. I'm pretty sure that's the exact career my mom hoped I'd have before I disappointed her by becoming a comedian. Fate also gets access to a secret base the Tower of Fate, an invisibility-cloaked tower in Salem, Massachusetts that houses numerous magical artifacts of power. As Kent adventured through the comics, Naboo's voice guided Fate as he fought on behalf of the Lords of Order against the Lords of Chaos. While traveling through Alexandria, Kent meets a young woman named Inza, and the two fall in love. Together, they fought supernatural entities in more fun comics, defeating a gallery of villains beginning with an evil sorcerer called Woden in their first issue. A cool 30 issues later, saving the world with his dope girlfriend all the time just wasn't enough, so he enrolled 
enrolled in medical school. During World War I, Dr. Fate and several other heroes, including Adam, The Flash, Spectre, Green Lantern, Hawkman, Sandman, and Our Man, were persuaded by President Roosevelt to form the Justice Society of America after Adam saved his life. Fate and Spectre also managed to close a portal to the demon realm during this time, defeating the elder god Koth Shugoth, the god of wrath's powers. At one point in the early 40s, to curb Naboo's invasive control over his body, Kent made himself a half-helmet replica of the Helm of Fate, and instead drew his powers from the Amulet of Anubis and the Cloak of Destiny. Back in 2030 BC, Anubis granted Khalees, an evil priest, his most prized artifact, and he used it to enslave the people of Egypt for many years. Thankfully, Naboo thought that this was bullshit, so he confiscated the amulet and turned Khalees into a mummy. One of the cooler aspects of this particular artifact is that it has its own pocket universe. It's also revealed later to trap the souls of fallen Dr. Fate hosts. In 1942's All-Star Squadron number 23, Kent went back to wearing the Helm of Fate to revert to his full power in an attempt to find his missing JSA teammate, Spectre. Not long after, the Helm of Fate was lost when it and the evil priest Kulak were thrown into infinite dimensions. Between this point and the 60s, Kent would use his half-helm persona sparingly, eventually retiring from crime fighting. At some point during this period, Kent was reunited with the Helm of Fate off-page and was wearing it again when DC dusted him off for his in-publication return to 1963's Justice League of America number 21. In the 80s, Kent's relationship with Naboo interfered with his marriage to Inza, and Naboo's enemies, the Lords of Chaos, would use this to their advantage to manipulate Inza into breaking Kent's heart. In a bid to retain his power, Naboo <laughs> boob. <laughs> boob. In a bid to retain his power, Naboo absorbed Inza into the Dr. Fate persona against her wishes. This was the first of many fusions we'd see of Dr. Fate. Kent would go on to team up with the Justice League for a spell until 87, when a four-issue solo run would turn the Helm of Fate over to Eric and Linda Strauss, the aforementioned loyal son and the mom who stepped up. In this arc, the war between the higher beings of order and chaos entered a stage known as Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga, aka the final age of man, had the Lords of Order pull out from battling the Lords of Chaos in the hopes that Chaos would destroy itself and Order could create a golden age in its wake. This strained the magic keeping Kent and Inza youthful, and Inza began to rapidly age. Inza died, and before Kent was allowed to die himself, Naboo had him seek out a new host for Dr. Fate. Kent and Inza lived their entire afterlife within the Amulet of Anubis, until the 90s when Naboo decided to resurrect them into younger bodies. Inza would be the primary Dr. Fate persona for a stint before the writers reverted them back into a fused persona. In 97, Kent and Inza as Dr. Fate died to make way for Fate, told the Doctor, the spitting image of comics in the 90s. Fate's run was brief, however. Fast forwarding past DC's retconning of their multiverse because comics, the modern version of Kent Nelson is now alive and well, and shares the title and powers of Naboo with his great nephew, Khaled Nassour. Khaled is the primary host of Dr. Fate, but his mentor Kent's extensive past with Naboo allows for him to tap into a portion of Naboo's power. Which brings me to the DCEU. Here's your spoiler warning, y'all. Click out now if you haven't seen Black Adam. For those of you that are staying, here's the deal. I won't get a chance to see Black Adam until tonight, so I'm unfortunately only working off trailers, promo footage, interviews, and prayers. That said, I'm pretty sure that I've got enough details to start theorizing. So, I've heard that, despite his commanding performance, they gave Pierce Brosnan the old Ben Kenobi treatment in this film. For all the Fate fans out there, I don't think that this will be the last we see of Fate or even Ken Nelson, however. Though this is probably the last time we'll be seeing Nelson as a living, breathing person. I'd imagine that if the DCEU wants to keep the title of Dr. Fate around, for the next era of films, they'll start transitioning to another holder of the Dr. Fate title. Personally, my vote is for the DC AMU's original character, Steel Maxim. This himbo is the perfect contrast to the self-serious Naboo, and I think it'd be an interesting dynamic to explore further. I'm joking, although I do love Steel Maxim, Stripper Fate's more Harley Quinn animated series material. We're probably gonna get a version of Khalid Nassour as the next Fate. As a younger Dr. Fate, we could see Khalid struggle with Naboo's manipulations more prominently, as he doesn't have the years of training and experience Kent has. Through either the Amulet of Anubis or the Helm of Fate itself, Kent can still play a mentor role to Khaled as a ghostly psychic presence. And as we've seen, death really hasn't stopped Naboo from resurrecting Kent. I've also seen some speculation that Adriana's son, Eamon, might take on Khaled's story for the film franchise. So personally, I think that DC should stick to the source material and go with Khaled Asor. Because if you're going off book, you already know my vote. Why not me? 6% body fat, 20 inch guns. Hell, I even took a magic class once. Thanks again to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click the link in the description to receive a free $60 gift when you join Thrive Market today. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Whitney Puppy. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. And thanks for watching. Bye.